What's up everybody, this is Gems. Today I'm gonna to be talking about good team communication. Now, communication is probably the most important part of having good teamwork in a game like Insurgency. There is no kill fee, there is no radar, there's no real good way of getting information from your team other than with your voice. So having a mic is crucial and being able to use it is very important. And good communicators are some of the most valuable people. I'd rather have a player with good communication on my team than just the sickest fragger in the world that can't give me a call out because if I get killed because I don't have the information I need to make a correct decision, that tilts me. So. Good communication is super, super valuable, and I think it's something everybody can work on. Before I even start talking about good communication, it's really important that you know the callouts for all the maps. There's a lot of resources out there. There's videos on YouTube. There's images of all the labels of all the spots on the map. Go check those out. Really work on those. That's your number one priority as a good communicator in Insurgency is just knowing what everything is called. So before a round starts, or maybe as you're running out of spawn, you're gonna to wanna to give your teammates an idea of what your plan is for the early game. Um, so it's typical that you know during a pug, everyone will kind of pick a lane. Usually there's about you know five lanes on a map that are sort of available and everyone just sort of claims one of those and just sort of spreads out and tries to get map control early in the game. So basically, you know, you wanna give your team an idea like, hey, I'm gonna go balk and I'm gonna pre-fire apps, you know, on district, or I'm gonna get on to B and I'll be watching tires. Pre-round is really important because you give your whole team an idea of what's going on and what the sort of general strategy is going to be for this upcoming round. And it's good to kind of do this every single round, you know, even if you're going to maybe be doing the same thing. If everybody on the team lets everybody else know what they're planning on doing, it helps you figure out if you have a problem with your setup before you go and play the round. Because a lot of times after the round, you'll be like, oh, wait, we didn't have anybody playing B or A, we didn't have anybody on Balk. So it's simple problems like that are really easy to fix just by making sure everybody is on the same page before you run out and go battle. The next category for callouts would be obviously the one that most people know about, and that's calling out when you get kills or when you go down. Doesn't seem like there's really a standard way people have been doing this, but in general, people usually call minus one and then the call out for where they got the kill. But lately, I've definitely been hearing a lot of people just saying minus one, and then they go about their business and maybe minus two or I'm down. But I'd rather hear where you got the kill than if you got the kill at all. Because hearing that you got a kill, especially in a pug situation where I don't know exactly whose voice is whose or where they're playing, I need to know where you got that kill. If I know that you killed their B player or I know you killed their apps player, etc it gives me information and maybe the spot that i'm playing that would free me up for a push or let me know that i can you know gain more map control so it's really important to tell your teammate where you got the kill so you know minus balk minus b i think that's better than just saying minus one minus two minus three and you everyone can kind of keep track in their head how many players are up i feel like more experienced players don't really need to be told um but it also is helpful to remind your team exactly how many players are up especially like in late game situations where it's a really really long round and it's maybe been a couple of respawns and caps uh it's good if, if you're on if you feel like you have a good idea of how many are up if you can say four up three up two up so it's really important to give a call out where on the map you get your kills same thing goes for if you go down don't just say i'm down say i'm down where and where you are down. In fact, if you go down and you're in a crucial position, I would recommend saying the call out first. Say like, Balk, Balk, I'm down. If you're getting killed by a player who is pushing that could easily go and flank the rest of your team, you need to give that call out immediately. So if a teammate is in a position where they can look there towards where that enemy is gonna be, they can do that as fast as possible. So I actually don't even think saying I'm down and then the call out is optimal. I think you should say the call out and then that you're down. The next category is playing an objective. If you're the B player, a really big part of your job is giving information about what exactly is going on on the point beyond what the in-game announcer is telling your team nobody really knows exactly what percent b is at or if it's still blocked how many other people how many other enemies are on b so if you're the b player i recommend every 25 percent tell your team okay i'm capping b b 20 percent b 50 percent b 70 percent i don't say 75 or 25 because it takes too long so just 20 percent is fine 50 percent 75 and then i'm about to cap b 
as a side note, as a B player, before you cap a point, check your map and make sure you don't have five players alive because in some cases you do not want to cap if you have all your team alive because it's basically wasting potential respawn. It's often a good idea to get off of the point and save it at 99% so you can cap your team in after they go down, possibly later in the round. So giving your team the percent that B is at when you're capping it will help them make decisions. So if it seems like you're getting B for free and you're just getting it capped up with no enemies contesting it, then some of your flankers on your team may want to make aggressive plays because they know they'll get a respawn. If they have a pretty good percent chance of getting an entry, they might do a little bit of a risky play right before you cap. So giving that percent really will help the rest of your team make better decisions. So it's really important as a B player to give as much info as you can. Now, if you're blocked, you need to tell your team that you're blocked and you know, still give the percents any gaps in communication where no one's communicating, the B player can often just sort of remind your team what's going on on the objective because firefight is objective based. The objective wins rounds. So the B player, even though you might not be in the fray and you might just be proning, looking at a wall and not actively fighting, your job is really important and good communication from a B player, I feel like is the number one spot on the map to have really good communication as well as the fact that you're in the middle of the map. So you're gonna be hearing a lot because you're just so central. You can hear footsteps from most of the map on a lot of the smaller maps and give your team so much information. It's so valuable. So good B players with good headphones, and good sound whoring capabilities are just really, really MVPs in my book. And I love having them on my team. Next part of good communication is just map control callouts and basically telling your team what you're controlling, what part of the map you're watching. Uh, this, this is kind of like similar to how the B player can feed information to the rest of the team. Um, all the rest of the team can tell the B player what they're covering. So the B player, there's more places to watch from B than anywhere else in the map. It's really, really overwhelming. So if you can tell your B player what is safe, what you have covered, that helps them so much. They can be looking the right direction. If they're looking at the same place that you're looking, that's basically a waste of eyes and they could just get flanked. So rather than them looking at connector and you also looking at connector, they could turn around and maybe watch shops and watch that flank. Periodically, whenever there's a gap in the communication and you feel like you can give some relevant information, tell your team what you're watching, especially in sort of stalemate situations or after a cap, it's really important to kind of tell your team what's being watched. So I always am telling my team what I'm watching so that to make sure that no one else is watching the same thing and they can go do something more useful somewhere else on the map or maybe just turn and look at a slightly different angle. That's actually really, really important and it's just gonna increase the overall map control that you have. So communication is directly tied to map control because it's really hard to know what your team is looking at if they're not telling you that. So really, really simple, really, really useful tell your team what you're looking at. Also, another thing you can do, if, if you ever move from a spot and your team is expecting you to be watching something and you feel like you need to move and relocate, call out your rotations. Like, okay, I'm moving from bridge. I'm gonna go down to barber and I'm gonna watch our lower barber, stuff like that. Um, tell your team where they can be flanked from. If you stop watching something, be like, okay, barber's open, I'm leaving, I'm pushing to see, barber is open. When you leave an area and stop watching it, that area becomes a potential lane for the enemy to push and you need to let your team know that so they're aware that that is a potential flank lane for the enemy the next part of having good team communication is the post round at the end of the round it's really important to give your team leader your igl as much good information as you can so he can make a better decision about how to strategize against the team in the next coming rounds if you're playing in a pug and you don't necessarily have one IGL, it's still really, really important to kind of let your team know what happened in your lane and what went wrong or what went right. What did you do that last round and what was the result? What did the enemy do? What did they rush? What are your predictions for what they're going to do in the upcoming rounds and what would good counters to those moves be? If someone on your team's having a lot of trouble in their lane and they keep getting pre-fired or they keep getting shut down, maybe ask if they want to switch roles with you, switch lanes with you. A lot of the trouble that many teams run into is just based on their setup at the beginning of the round. They're doomed from the start because there's some fundamental problem with the way that they are going out and getting map control. 
especially after a lost round, it's really easy for things to get heated and stuff can go downhill really quickly if people's communication starts getting really negative or blame oriented. You want to focus on not saying anything that passes blame on your teammate. Rather, everything you say after a round needs to be solution oriented. You need to be trying to figure out exactly how to fix the problems that happen. So the first step of that is to figure out what the problems are. So you only have 30 seconds or less to quickly figure out solutions. So everything you say needs to be solution oriented. Don't try to pass blame. Don't get mad. Don't get emotional. Rather, just try to get as much good data as you can and figure out what the counter is to what the enemy is doing. If you work on all the above things I just mentioned, you're going to be really, really valuable as a team player just by having that good communication. And if you're getting frags on top of that, you're just going to be even more valuable. So I really, really encourage you to kind of focus while you're in game on your communication, what you're saying and cutting down on chatter. Uh, especially if you're really, really trying to win. I, I think a lot of teams, uh, especially in pug environments, I mean, obviously you're there to have fun, but talking about stuff that's not related to what's going on in game is really just sort of wasted time because you could pretty much talk for 10 minutes about each given round if you, if you wanted to and have a full understanding of what happens every round. It would probably take that long. So every second is really valuable and every little piece of information you can give your team can be really, really good. But at the same time, you don't want to clutter your comms. You don't want to have all this unnecessary chatter. One last aspect that I wanted to mention is just the volume of your callouts. I notice a lot of players giving a call out kind of quietly and not very urgent sounding and not all callouts are equal some should be more urgent than others especially if you're playing in a spot kind of far back and your team is about to be flanked flanks are so damaging in insurgency so you need to make sure your team is aware of a super dangerous potential threat when it happens and so you actually need to change the volume and urgency of your voice when you're calling something out based on how dangerous how threatening it is to the rest of your team after you go down. Or if you see someone rushing a lane early in the round, you need to let your B guy know as fast as possible that he's getting pushed because seconds count, milliseconds count. Get that call out to your team as fast as you can, as clearly as you can. Good comms save lives. Good comms win rounds. And they can make a good team a legendary team. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching it. Make sure to click subscribe and like if you enjoyed it. And I will hopefully be seeing you soon in another video. This has been Gems. Thanks for watching.